All right, so in this video, we're gonna be using sequential function chart, which is a step and transition to program a machine. The, the scope of work of this machine is actually gonna be controlling a robot, picking up an actual engine and putting it into a crate, as you see is running right now. Now, we actually are using sequential function chart, which is one of the PLC programming languages. It's a step and transition model, which is very easy and uh, easy to follow, easy to troubleshoot if done properly. Now I will say that there's a lot of times these things can get very complicated, uh, but when it comes down to it, this is a very simple scenario for this actual process that we're running. Now um, I'm going to actually come in and turn off. We don't have a push button station on this, so I'm gonna turn off the bit for the push button station and allow the process to finish, right? So allow the process to step through and then when it gets all the way back to where it comes back up to the very start up here, and you'll see this, the step right here is what we're calling step underscore zero zero one. That's basically our safe state. So we have a bunch of tags uh, and those tags are Boolean. So they accept a zero or a one value. Now in that zero or one value, right? So that's what we're actually commanding the safe state, right? So we're commanding the, the whole machine right now to say, okay, this is going to be our safe state, right? So stops, we want the stops down. Um, we want the robot to in home position off. We want the engines or the the work creating the, the engine or creating the crate uh, to be off. And then obviously anything that pertains to the robot, which would be the pick uh, and the place uh, basically of the robot, which is the end effector, uh, the vacuum on and off. We want that turned off as well. So this first step right here is basically our safe state. Now, the transition to get out of that step, right? That's what we're waiting on right now, is waiting on step one underscore zero zero dot DN, which is the done bit. We have a timer on that done, right? It's basically saying, okay, it has to be in this step for at least 250 or at least um, 2500 milliseconds, right? Which is basically two and a half seconds. So we're saying, all right, no matter what, we at least have to be in step zero or step one, we uh, underscore zero zero one. We need to be in that step at least uh, two and a half seconds. And the start bit needs to be on, right? So the start bit, as you see, is not on at this current time. Now, as soon as we turn that start bit on, you're gonna see that it will transition to step two. Now there's a cool thing over here called auto, it's basically auto scroll. I can have, I can enable that. And for such a short program, it will auto scroll. Sometimes this can be a very um, hard thing to follow if that auto scroll is on. So just keep in mind, you can turn this on and off, which will automatically scroll the active steps. So let's go ahead and turn our, our and I'll, you'll see this in just a second. So let's turn the start bit on and allow the process to continue. Now what's going to happen now is the sequential function chart being that we're on auto scroll, right? Is going every time the step transitions down to another step over in our left hand side, it's going to transition down to the next very, very next step. And it will follow the program as it is being written or as, as it's being used, right? So how, how it was written and then how it's being used currently in the process, right? So how is the program being actually executed? with the machine in the, in its process. So just keep that in mind. It's a cool thing to actually have if, if your machine is very simple, but it can be a very like confusing thing if you're actually using a, a more complex scenario, right? We're just tur turning it on bits and turning off bits, so it's very easy. Um, we're using easy, easy PLC's machine simulator, so again, we don't have a push button station, but we could actually add that because it's a 3D simulator and we could actually go in and edit that and put a push button station on there. So let's actually talk about the logic just a little bit. Uh, right now, you can see now it's going to the perch. Um, it's going to, it's in step three, which is basically telling the robot to go home. And when the robot goes home, that's the actual perch position where it's waiting for the, the um, engine to be in its place. Now it's waiting on an inductive switch right here. So I'll actually walk over there and show you that. We'll actually walk over and see that inductive switch. So let's see that. And I wanna kinda show you this because there's a switch right here. You see the stops come up, right? There's a switch over here in the stop. 
for the crate and there's also a switch for the actual uh, engine in place right at the stop so you'll notice this right here where it's in step three it will transition out of step three when the engine hits that spot or basically the photo eye is made right and then it comes over here and places the part and again I'm using timers for my step and transitions and the robot is stopped right so I'm making sure the robots not in motion um, and then we come in and fix the part and we tell it to basically again as soon as it fixes the part we're not really detecting if it, the parts fixed or not what we're saying is okay step 5 is done right which is 75 or 750 milliseconds basically three quarters of a second all right so when it comes down to it we're very easily showing the step and transition um, the only really complex transition we currently have is the robot detect which we're saying the part is on the robot end effector we're saying the, that the engine is however attached right so it's a it's detected and the inductive switch 2 is made which is over here on the crate and the robot is stopped so if we walk over there we can walk over there and see this process a little bit better and the reason I'm actually walking over there and showing you this is because well you you get a, a better idea of how things are working if you can see them okay so let's look at this alright so you see this there's a, a stop right here and there's a photo eye right here there's a stop over here where the engine is when the engine comes in place then the photo eye is made now we're waiting again to in step 006 uh, we're gonna wait to transition out of that until this inductive switch is made right so now it's made so now the engine can come down and step through, right? So now the, the actual sequential function chart can step through that, that specific spot. Now, so this is very simple, right? So we're using a couple, basically a couple things as far as in indications, like a couple photo eyes, um, a lot of timers um, to get this accomplished. I'll let this auto scroll for just a second so you can see the process working. Um, and we'll come back up here to the views and change the view so as you can see you can you can actually change the views and, and have it watch the whole process and so this is actually a good view right here so you can it's like an overhead view and you can kind of see the process working the one motor comes out right where the uh, obviously the robot would pick it up it's going to hit that stop when it hits that stop then it's going to pick it up and then move it over to where the crate will be and when the, when the crate hits the destination where it hit, it's against the stop then it will actually place the the actual part in there we'll place the engine inside the crate and then the crate just simply runs out into the next station right so it's a very simple easy understandable thing so again when it comes down to thinking about like controls and what plc language to write uh, plc code in um, this could be done i've shown this very system being done in ladder logic I wrote a state machine for that this however is going to be in again a sequential function chart so it's very uh, easy to understand and comprehend um, but some things are not meant for structure text right are not meant for sequential function chart um, because when it comes down to it you're and I said structure text to begin with because you're kind of using structure text a little bit when you're saying okay this statement over here you know you're saying the stop is equal to and then you're ending the the statement you're somewhat and then the transitions too. you know like you're saying okay well the step and uh, the start right or this and this right or in this case which is the the more I guess the bigger one would be like three different things so it's just basically if you think about that uh, in ladder logic it would be three different uh, tags or three different um, you know XICs to actually have that accomplished right so when you think about just what you're doing, right, when when how you're you're programming it and how you're going about your sequential function chart, does it make sense to use that language? In this sense, it, it actually does because this sim this is a very simple process, right? Not very complex whatsoever. Um, when you get into more complex things, m maybe it still does make sense, but you have to think about is it the the way that the sequential function chart stops stops and starts so let me actually describe that all right so 
real quick I want to actually highlight a very important thing about a sequential function chart which is going to be if I restart this right now okay so if I restart it and I load my driver and I come over here and I load my robot so if I start my driver right right now it's gonna pick up to where it left off okay but here's the cool thing about where I have this now in my controller properties I'm gonna show you this in my controller properties I have a spot called sequential or FFC execution now I have it in restart mode okay so you see the the um, what and you can't change it while the program is actually active but if I was offline I could change it so when I was offline I changed it to restart position to initiate the uh, or restart at the initial step okay so the initial step in this program if you can see is tagged right here so if I go to program mode and I come out of program mode and I go to run the initial step will be the very first thing it will start over at that point now obviously we had the start button press so let's actually take the start button out and then come back over here and do the same thing so to change this right I cannot change this if I'm in program mode I have to be offline okay so let me just show you that if I go offline then I have the ability to change this feature okay so then I have the ability to change that initial step right so when I restart the process it's a very cool feature it's a very uh, intelligent feature to use um, and very helpful right um, and also the initial step right so where do you want the initial step to be inside of your sequential function chart obviously you want that to be the very first thing um, does it have to be uh, probably not but again when it comes down to it it probably should be so it's easy to read so I'm gonna go online again real quick I'm gonna throw our process into run mode which is going to create that initial step which is up here it's not gonna get out of the transition step because again it's waiting on the start bit we're gonna start our actual machine it's gonna sit still until we actually turn on the start bit so right now we're waiting on the transition to step out of right so safety wise and recovery right we talk about PLC recovery we talk about how to recover from things uh, you always have to keep that in mind and with sequential function chart there's a built-in mechanism right which is called initial step right and then you can come up here to your controller properties and then FFC execution you can change that restart position to the initial step uh, so there's a very uh, you know easy built-in transition that will get you back to a safe recovery if you keep that in mind as you're programming the the sequential function chart then it's easier to actually execute and actually have a recovery now again when I come back in here and start the start button the system starts up and the process starts over uh, you can see my IO over here again you can see all the IO that's in the machine so currently this is a very uh, easy to comprehend very easy to understand but very helpful when it comes to sequential function charts you know when we've done these exact same uh, machines and stuff like that we've done those in ladder logic so I figured hey why not do these in sequential function chart to help you transition and learn more about PLC programming because is there is there just one language in PLC programming no there's actually four there's sequential function chart uh, there's uh, ladder logic function block and structured text so which is the best program to run or which is the best language to use right it really depends on the scope of work right how reliable is the code to run as it runs the scope of work and how easy is it to read or comprehend from the person behind you right so the person that has to operate this or, or not operate it but troubleshoot it look at it understand it edit it uh, grow from it right the, the stuff like that right so those three basic principles are very important so I'm making these videos very detailed very oriented so that you can really kind of grasp that feature and understand there's not just one programming language right and it's best to be more diverse and understand as much of that as you can understanding the tricks of each one of these is like just like we just talked about uh, the step and transitions the initial steps uh, the way things process I mean you can see the only ladder I have in here is my JSR to my actual sequential function chart 
Very simple, uh, very easy to read, very easy to comprehend. And if you looked at the whole program, I can actually take this, the whole program, and put it the whole, like side by side instead of all linear. Put it side by side and make it so much easier to read. However, it would not fit the purpose of me showing you the machine and it would be a little bit harder for you to comprehend as I talked about it. So in the efforts of what we were doing to better pass information on, we're trying to show the one side with the PLC logic running and show our actual machine running on this side. So we are using the OPC topic on this and uh, that's how the Easy PLC's machine simulator or the uh, 3D editor right here is being used and in, in interpreting the data from our actual PLC. Now again, are we could you use a real PLC? Yes, we are actually using, but we are actually using a Studio 5000 Logix Emulate processor, which is eight project or uh, processor number eight in the slot right here. So just keep in mind, you can use a real processor. I use a real processor all the time. Um, in this atmosphere, though, in training, I felt that it was best to just use the emulator because if you don't have a real processor you and you do have emulator you can use that right um, however if you don't have emulator you can still program this stuff and learn from it get muscle memory but understanding uh, how things are comprehended and working and stuff like that some of the small intricate things you can't really learn without obviously running the system so, but with all that said, um, these making making these programming videos is hopefully this is helping you understand and interpret the way sequential function chart works, the way Rockwell software works, and again, just helping you all around with PLC programming. So, with that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.